Hello, welcome back to V5 Outside Network. We've already, this is part two of our, our series for today. We're having a sermon on, on John 14, 6. Before we get into the sermon, let's go ahead and pray. God, we thank you for your love, God, your mercy, and your grace, O oh God. Speak to us through your word today. You're so good. Take care of everything in Jesus' name, pray, Lord. Amen. Okay, picture with me for one moment. You're watching TV, and all of a sudden you see a family playing together, praying together. And, you know, doing things that, you know, a family is supposed to be doing together, interacting with one another. And then all of a sudden, they say, okay, you can have this when you have, you know, Jesus Christ, and you can have a free, a free Bible. And, and then, then, then finally it concludes by saying, brought to you by Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints. This, this really sickens me. Not because we shouldn't be doing those things, but of course we should be praying together, we should be playing together, reading the Bible together. But up to just recently... The Latter-day Saints, also known as Mormons, didn't want anything to do with uh, Christianity. But now, so now they're saying, oh, we're just another denomination of, of Christianity, which is anything but the truth. Today we're going to get into uh, what really is the truth. Our text is, today is found in John 14, 6. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Lord comes to the Father, except to me. They give me some scripture context before you, you get into the text this morning, though. Here's the situation. Jesus is talking with his disciples and he's telling them how he's going to be leaving soon. He, he, he says, okay, you know, you know the way. But Thomas said, that's Jesus, Lord, if we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? You think about this now. Jesus was with the disciples teaching him for, you know, for a few years now. And Thomas asked Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Today we're going to learn from our Savior Jesus Christ to answer this very important question. As so for our text is found in John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. First of all, Jesus teaches us that he is the only way. There are so many people today that try to tell us that they're the only way to heaven. Or, while others say there, there's only there's many ways of heaven you get to heaven, but anyone who believes otherwise is near-minded. But what is Jesus teaches us in, in John fourteen six, Jesus makes it clear to us, I am the way. In other words, he is the only way. Jews, even though they rejected the Son of God, thought that their was their way was the only way to heaven. Joseph Witnesses, Muslims, Buddhists, you need New Agers, claim that they know the only way to heaven. While other religions do say that Jesus is one of many ways to get to heaven, like the Universalist. But this drastically contradicts what Jesus teaches us in the Bible, the Word of God. Proverbs 14 12 also says, There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. There's a way that seems right to a man. But in the way, in the end, it leads to death. Do you remember my dear Aunt Sally from math? This is the scientific formula to get the correct mathematical equation. First, we ought to multiply and then divide, and then you add and you subtract. In order to get the, to get the correct answer, you have to follow the formula. So, what would happen if people didn't follow this formula? If people didn't follow this formula. They can get a number of answers, and they can have all the support of why they come up with the answer they came up with, right? Same thing with, with, with the spiritual answer. You have to have the right spiritual you know, equation. You got to have the same, same formula to come up with the, the right spiritual equation, and that is through Jesus Christ. But if you didn't use the, the spiritual equation of Jesus Christ, you can come up with another, a number of answers, spiritual answers, for the, for the answer. And they, they can give all the support to how they come up with their answer. But just as there has to be a correct mathematical equation, there has to be the, you know, the correct spiritual equation to come up with the correct answer. Romans 10, 9, 10, 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Uh, dear, my, my friends, Jesus is the only formula and he is the only way to heaven. Don't let anybody deceive you. He is the only way. There's not one in many ways. He's not, you know, just 
you know, other people say other people have a different way, a different idea of how it should be, like the Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses. But Jesus is the only formula, and He is the only way to heaven. Next, Jesus teaches us that He is the only truth. So many people today are vessels who are being used by Satan. They're spreading Satan's lies rapidly across the entire world. For example, New Eaters claim to be the enlightened ones. We learn that Satan himself, he's a father of lies. From John 8, 44, B, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So what did Jesus teach us from the 14th chapter of John, verse 6? Jesus continues in verse 6 by saying, And the truth. So Jesus not only is the only way to the Father, he is the only truth as well. We as Christians need to not only believe that Jesus is the truth, we need to, and we need to spread the truth to those who, who, yet, who do not yet know the truth. Amen? Do you realize what has been going on in China? It's been going on for some time now. Government officials are being paid to read the Bible, yet they're being, being paid to read the, the, the Word of God to try to discredit the Bible. They are responsible for proving that the Bible is false. So how they fare? Needless to say, not too well. While they are trying to discredit the Bible, they themselves have come to know Jesus Christ in the process. And in fact, one day, one of these Chinese officials are going to uh, going to one of these church services, and they're they're trying to uh, you know talk, talk about how they, they, they discredit the Bible. Meanwhile. The Chinese official actually was the one giving the message. He preached about how they need to obey the authorities, but to never give up on their faith in Jesus Christ. People try to discredit the truth, but no matter how hard they may try, they cannot change what is true. How do we as Americans stack up when it comes to knowing the truth? Do people who consider themselves to be born again really know the truth? Let's take a look at a national survey conducted by George Varna. Even those who claim to be born again are not necessarily from the ground in the truth of the Bible. In this book, which provides a statistical analysis of religious beliefs in America, George Barna cites several fascinating statistics based on a national survey. In, 14, in chapter 4, he states, <coughs> the, the devil, or Satan, is not a living being, but is a symbol of evil. Then he asks, the segment of his survey, respondents who have identified themselves as born again Christians, he states, Do you strongly agree with this statement? Do you disagree with the statement? Do you agree somewhat or disagree strongly with that, with that statement? The born again Christian population replied, 32% strongly agreeing. <coughs> Excuse me. 11% agreeing somewhat. And 5% did not even know. Out of the total number of who actually responded to the remarkable 48 percent of people who were polled agree that, that Satan is only symbolic or did not even know at all. Should be surprising that just a few pages later Barnum would receive very startling results. His next question: Christians, Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, all others pray to the same God, even though they use different names for that God. Again, the respondents were asked to agree strongly, agree somewhat, disagree somewhat, or disagree strongly with that statement. Of the population who identified themselves as born-again Christians, 30% agreed strongly, 18% agreed somewhat, 12% did not even know. That is a sterling 60%. We all need to make sure that we know the truth and that, that the truth is Jesus. Jesus is the truth, and he is the only truth. Jesus next teaches us that he is the only life. He is the only life. Everywhere we go, we can see people who think that they are living, but the truth of the matter, they are only surviving. <coughs> One day, I was talking with a gentleman at work, that he lives for weekends, or he lives for a, he lives for a day out. I'm not asking him why, but I had an idea of why he said what he did. It is very easy for us to adopt this unfortunate mindset. But let us see what Jesus says about life. Jesus makes it clear to us in the last part of the statement 
and the life. So not only is Jesus the way, not only is he the truth, but Jesus is the only life. In him, we can have life, and this is, speaks not only of, of in heaven, also in our present life here on earth as well. In Jesus Christ alone can we have life. Yes, it is true that everyone who is alive has been given life by our Heavenly Father, but not everyone truly has life in Jesus Christ. People who just live for the weekends miss the point of living in the first place. Whether they are not followers of Jesus Christ or the disciples of Jesus Christ. So what does it mean to truly live, you say? When we have life in Jesus Christ, we cannot help but show and tell others about him. When we have life in Christ, we will truly live our lives in a way to please our Savior. And we will receive satisfaction from doing this in the process. We will also be filled with the presence of God as well as his joy. Now this is life. Paul says boldly in Philippians 1.21, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Jesus also teaches us, and a few chapters back in John, about this life is lived through him. Jesus says to us in John 10.10, 10, The thief is only there to steal and to kill and destroy. I came to take out the hit that have real and eternal life, more and a better life than they ever dreamed of. Other translations say may have life and have it to the full, or have life and have it more abundantly. My Father, through Jesus, His Son Jesus Christ, wants us to bless us in this life, not just one that waits us in heaven. Listen carefully, this is a song, this is a song that was originally sung by Stephen Curtis Chapman. It talks about how we have life in Jesus Christ. Our life is just more than living and dying, and is trying to make it through the day. Today I watch in silence, people pass me by, and it's strange to see if there was something hidden in their eyes. They all look back to me, is there to say, life just goes on. The old familiar story, told in different ways, make the most of your own journey from the cradle to the grave. Dream your dreams tomorrow because today life must go on. There's more to this life, living and dying, more than just trying to make it through the day. More to this life, more than these eyes alone can see, and there's more than this life alone can be. Tonight he lies in silence, Staring into space, and thus are ways to make tomorrow better than today. In the morning light it looks the same, life just goes on. He's got of his family, takes care of his work, and every Sunday morning he takes his place at the church. Somehow he still feels the need to search, and life just goes on. <coughs> Excuse me. There's more to this life, living and dying, more than just trying to make it through the day. More to this life, more than these eyes alone can see, and there's more than this life alone can be. So where do we start? We may find every part, what makes this life complete? If we turn our eyes, Jesus will find the true beginning is there at the cross where he died, he died to bring us more to this life, living and dying, more than just trying to make it through the day, more to this life. More than these eyes alone can see, and there's more than this life alone can be. But to live our lives for him here, he receive us in heaven as well. For this is the hope that we as believers in Christ have, that when we live together forever in heaven with our Savior, that this life is finished. And God will say to us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done. A good and faithful servant. Well-known author Max Cato 
puts it this way. We know that somehow our Heavenly Father is going to take all those who follow Him into eternal happiness. It's to that day we look. It's upon our hope and confidence that we have, He will return that we stand. Our prayer should be that our, our Father will help us make decisions that will set us on the course of eternal life. Listen to the Christ rather than to the voices of men. Jesus says, you cannot please men and still be a servant of God. Those who listen and follow Jesus Christ will, will be received into heaven by the pierced hands of the one who knows the freedom of giving up of what you can, cannot earn in order to receive what no one can take away from you, eternal life. In Jesus, in Jesus alone is there life. Jesus is life. So what else is Jesus? Finally, Jesus teaches us that he is our mediator. Jesus teaches us that he's, a, he's our mediator. Some people think that Joseph Smith will be their mediator, while others believe that Charles C. Russell will be their mediator. Well, so others do not even claim to have a mediator. So what does Jesus teach us concerning this? In the very last, last part of, of verse 6 in John, Jesus makes it clear to us, no one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. Without Jesus Christ as a mediator, we would all be in big trouble, wouldn't we? We need to keep in mind that God is a holy and a perfect God. And humankind is anything but holy and perfect outside of Jesus Christ. Amen? Ever since the fall of Adam and Eve, human beings are separated from their Creator. The Jewish people, God's chosen people, were often separated from Him. They would always offer up sacrifice to Him, and when they would do this, they had to offer up animals without defect or blemish. These animals had to be perfect. But Jesus Christ is our perfect sacrifice, once and for all. The writer of Hebrews writes in chapter 9, verses 11 to 15, When Christ came as a high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all, by his own blood, having attained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them, since they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse us, our consciousness, from acts that lead to death, that we may serve the living God? For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. Those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Jesus is our mediator. He is the only one who enables us to have a personal relationship with a perfect God. Paul teaches us also in 1 Timothy 2, 5, and 6 that there is one, me one God and, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given at the proper time. Jesus Christ, is our Savior, is the only mediator between God and man. It is through him alone that we can know a holy and a perfect God in an, in an intimate manner. Please do not be deceived, my friends. There are no other ways to get to God except through Jesus Christ. There is no truth apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, and only through Jesus Christ our Savior can we experience life more abundantly. Jesus is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. He is our mediator. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father, and we need to continue to place our faith and trust in Him, Him alone. So let us know the way, the truth, and the life for ourselves. Because Jesus tells us in John 6.29, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. This is Christianity, and for Christianity is all about, to believe in the one our Heavenly Father has sent, Jesus Christ. When he says believes, it means that more than just mentally, 
It's talking about believing with our hearts and our minds and our souls, all of our beings. We need to do this by getting to know Him personally. So let's, let's get to know the way, the truth, and the life for ourselves as individuals. To know Him is to love Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love, God, your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life. That no one comes to the Father except through you. We thank you that we can get to know the Father, a perfect God, through you, Jesus Christ, through your sacrifice, through you sitting in our, in, our, in our place, dying in our place for us. You're so good, Lord. Next weekend, we're going to celebrate Easter, Lord God. We also, every day we should celebrate Easter. We, every day we should celebrate the fact that you came to life, died for our sins, Lord. You're so good. We love you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, pray, Lord. Amen. So, so go ahead and, and like and subscribe. Thank you for, for subscribing for our um, Victoria. Go over here, Victoria. Thank you for liking and subscribing for our network. Continue to tune in for our new videos. But don't forget to like and subscribe to our videos. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great day.